Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Kerbal Gets Real. We're now in the first half of 1966, where hopefully we're going to be sending our first space station to the moon. We've also got a couple of missions coming up at Mars and Venus, and after spending a long time in travel, the Orbis Orbiter will finally be reaching Vesta. As was the case with 1965 part 1, the first half of this episode was actually done in a live stream, so if you want to go catch that in all of its unedited glory, it will be the most recent upload on my channel. Well, unless you're from the future and you're watching this way in the future, then it probably won't be because I will have uploaded a lot more since then. But here we have the first launch of 1966, the Clog Station Core on the 13th of January. Now. The clog is imaginatively named. It is the Carnassa Lunar Orbital Gateway. So it is going to be our space station that goes around the moon. And this is actually the first launch of an Icarus Super 66. As I have mentioned before, I would quite like to show the entire launch the first time I launch a launch vehicle. But unfortunately, in order to launch into the plane of the moon, I had to do this at night. So we couldn't really see much. Now I was quite surprised that this went completely successfully. We had no ignition failures whatsoever because on that second stage, well, we are using four HD3 engines and as it stands at the moment, well, at the time of this flight, we had around a 15% failure rate on those and four of them, well, yeah, that was quite lucky, really quite fortunate that we didn't actually have any failures. But anyway, we got to orbit fine. I remembered to deploy the solar panels so we would have power for, for our journey. And now we have lit up that LR87 LH2 vacuum engine to perform our translunar injection. Now I did speak a little bit about this in the last episode. We are going to make full use out of that engine. So the first burn which we have just seen was to perform our translunar injection. Then for the second burn, well, we're gonna use that to capture around the moon any minute now. There we go, we're just about to fire it up. There it is. And then finally, because this engine has three ignitions, for the third ignition, what we're gonna do is we are going to detach that Minotaur transfer stage, which we are about to do. There we go, it is separate and we are gonna light up that engine for its final time so that we can smash this thing down onto the surface of the moon. We are good space citizens. We quite like to tidy up after ourselves and not leave a load of rubbish and debris in low lunar orbit. So with that, we are gonna try and tidy up and send this crashing into the moon in a rather big explosion. Well, if I'm gonna be particularly honest, that explosion was rather anticlimactic. I was hoping for something a bit bigger than that. That was a fuel tank that was, well, not quite full of Hydrolox, but it had a lot of Hydrolox left in it. So yeah, a weird thing about that though is that the avionics on the top of that transfer stage didn't decide to break at first. No, it kind of flipped and flew out of control and went flying along the surface of the moon for a bit. It was rather strange. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. But here we go on the 4th of February, 1966. The Orbis Orbiter has finally reached Vesta and we are gonna to attempt to capture. Now, a thing about this capture burn, this took a really, really, really long time. So I'm using the AJ-10 advanced engine for the first stage and then foolishly, well, maybe not so foolishly, it works. So it's not really that foolish, but anyway, we are going to be using an Aerozine and NTO RCS thruster, and those things do not have much thrust at all on them. You can actually see down there on the nav ball that our remaining burn time for this stage is over seven minutes for just a single stage. And actually, yeah, it wasn't too bad though in the end. A physical time walk through most of it, so it didn't, didn't seem to take that long. Anyway, it was about this time that I actually realized, well, we've got a rather large amount of Delta V left in this thing. So what are we gonna do? We are going to attempt to land on Vesta. So this was completely unplanned. And I think just the general bravado of being on live stream kind of made me think, you know what? Let's try and land this thing and land this thing we are going to try and do indeed. You can see we've still got over 300 meters per second of Delta V there has gone down below 300 now, but 
we are moments away from touching down on the surface of this asteroid. And bonk, there we go. We have touched down on Vesta. We're going to do a little bit of a flip and float away a little bit before actually coming to a complete stop. So, yeah, like I said, completely unplanned. But it's another celestial body that we can tick off the list. So with the landing of Olbers Orbiter, which I guess you could now actually call the Olbers Lander, it's no longer orbiting Vesta. We completed our ScanSat contract and we sent it down. So yeah, it is now a lander. And well, yeah, we've landed on something else. And that is actually a point that I do want to bring up. So I did land on Phobos in this episode as well. We are going to see Phobos and part, well, not the landing later on. However, Unfortunately, I did have to cut that out because, well, the landing out. And the reason why is when I was recording that, well, it froze. It was a bit bizarre. My voice still carried through, but the actual screen froze. So I didn't want to put that in because, well, it would just look all juddery and a little bit horrible. So I have skipped that out. But anyway, we have now picked our three astronauts for the Clog Crew. And they are going to be Ellen Cox, Bonnie Ellis and James Peters. So here we have on the 11th of April 1966, the launch of Clog Crew number one. So this is going to be our first lot of crew that we are going to be sending to the Carnassa Lunar Orbital Gateway. And once again, we are going to be launching this on top of an Icarus Super 66, slightly modified so that we can actually put crew on the top of this thing. So this is definitely crew rated. This can actually get astronauts up to orbit, pulling less than 3G the entire way. So it's a bit of an uncomfortable ride, but a lot more comfy than a lot of the rockets that I've sent crew up in the past. Once again, all four of those HG3 engines actually ignited without fail. And I was really surprised at that, so much so that I actually opened up the F3 screen to make sure that I was believing what I was seeing. I did mention it earlier on, but those things have a really high rate of failure. And this was a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure what happened here, but Mechjeb Ascent Guidance seemed to have a little bit of trouble getting us up in the final stages of the ascent. Part of that was my fault, but that was because I was trying to correct it going wrong in the first place. But yeah, apart from that, the launch went completely successful. Now we are lighting up that LR87 LH2 engine on the Minotaur stage to perform our trans lunar injection, where we are going to be sending these three astronauts to the moon. Now I have picked up a crewed lunar orbit of three for this mission, and that's what I'm doing this burn for here. We do need to change our inclination so that it is above 60 degrees. So we had to do that. It's gonna make it a little bit more difficult getting to the space station, but we have more than enough Delta V in this thing to actually do all of that. So here we go with voila, number two on the 16th of April, 1966. Everything all seems to be coming at once. This is going to be our capture at Venus. And ideally, what I wanted to do here was capture and land at the same time. But for some strange reason, I could not do that. For a really bizarre reason, I'm not entirely sure why, and I still don't know, even after looking back through the footage, well, that AJ-10 advanced engine just decided to stop. Not at a point where it was particularly problematic. We did capture at Venus. However, my Apple apps at Venus was a little bit too high and I wanted to bring this down to a roughly circular orbit so that I could actually land in the day because the last time I landed at Venus was at night. It would be nice to show an actual landing. But there we go, the engine just cut out. But now we return once again to the clog crew and this happened. So I was a little bit silly and I forgot to actually change the avionics on that orbiter to deep space. This is the first time that I've used this orbiter near the moon and I did test this in crash, but being the silly person that I am, I did not test this in crash around the moon. So we have no attitude control whatsoever, which is going to make it, well, 
nigh on impossible to actually reach Clog Station. So, what we are going to try and do is actually send this back to Earth. And you saw James Peters there go out on EVA. And the reason why he went out on EVA was to actually point this orbiter in the correct orientation so that we can actually perform a burn to get back to Earth, which we are doing now. So I had to do this over several burns because we had no attitude control. Well, the spacecraft kind of lost its orientation. So every time I approached the node, I hit the burn button again, I hit Z, and we started that engine up. But there we go, we have actually escaped the moon's sphere of influence. We are on our way back to Earth, and we are gonna bring our periaps down to a point where we are gonna be well within Earth's atmosphere. So, the mission may yet be saved after, well, a really silly oversight by me. We hopefully should be able to send these three crew back home. We do have to perform a little bit of an extra burn just to really hammer that periaps down so that hopefully we can actually, well, capture in Earth's atmosphere. And once again, we are going to be getting James Peters out so that he can kind of maneuver this craft around so that we can actually perform that ever so slight adjustment. But there we go. We have lowered our periaps to a point where we will capture Well, the avionics weren't the only issue with this mission. We only have two days and two hours of oxygen left in this orbiter, and that unfortunately means not all of these astronauts are going to make it home. So in order to provide enough oxygen for Ellen Cox to make it back safely, James Peters and Bonnie Ellis have made the ultimate sacrifice, and they have left the orbiter while still around the moon. At least they can take solace in the fact that their final actions will be to safely send Ellen Cox back home. Here she is now, all alone in that orbiter. Where three came, only one has left. This has been a truly disastrous mission for the Carnassa Space Agency. And actually, the first couple of deaths that we have ever suffered they will be remembered. At 9.33 p.m. on the 18th of April, 1966, Carnassa Space Agency suffered its first two fatalities, James Peters and Bonnie Ellis. But, as was mentioned, with their brave sacrifice, Ellen Cox was able to safely return to Earth's atmosphere with very, very little oxygen remaining in that capsule. Here we see the last moments of Clog Crew 1's cursed flight, Ellen Cox unable to endure the sheer amount of G's poured upon that capsule by the less than ideal descent profile from that rather unorthodox method of returning to Earth. But she did manage to, well, regain consciousness in time. But unfortunately, all was not well. For some reason, for reasons unbeknownst to the Carnassa Space Agency, the forward heat shield would not deploy, and so the parachutes would not go off. That was truly and utterly terrible. I cannot believe that that happened, and it happened on that live stream nonetheless. So, I did mention whenever someone died, I am going to defund my space agency. So there, I just took away one and a half million funds. But with that, we can return to Voila 2. And finally, we are going to be able to deorbit Venus on the 23rd of April, 1966. Now, you may notice that we have lost the aeroshell on that. And 
when I return to this craft, which I haven't shown, basically those payload fairings got attacked by the Kraken and went wildly out of control, causing this to spin dramatically. So I had to ditch them and hope and pray that the fact that we've not got those on this craft anymore doesn't mean that this thing will burn up re-entering, or well, not even re-entering, entering Venus's atmosphere. But there we go, we have detached our deorbit stage and we are making our final approach to, well, land on the surface of Venus. There we have a very hot re-entry. We can see that burning up behind us and we have detached the heat shield. Now I have attached a solid rocket motor to that heat shield because if you don't, then there is a good chance that that heat shield will come smashing straight back into you at Venus. It has happened more than I'd like to admit, but yeah, whack solid rocket motors on heat shield if you're gonna land at Venus because otherwise you are gonna smash into your craft and it is gonna cause a lot of upset. But we managed to such down safely in the Venus Highlands, which is somewhere where I've never actually been before. Well, at least something went right then. We actually managed to land on Venus and a lot of the money that I lost from paying out the friends and family and all of the insurance claims for James, Peters, Bonnie Ellis and Ellen Cox, well, we managed to get a lot of that back by actually completing the contract to land on Venus. And not only that, we also got a lot of science from doing that too. But we are gonna go back to Tenacity, our Mars rover, because actually, it has made its way over to the rover point that we wanted it to get to. So here we have on the 18th of May, 1966, the Tenacity Rover, since named by the comment section. Thank you very much for naming this craft. And this was odd. This was really bizarre. It just goes all over the place. I did mention earlier on in the episode that I did cut out a bit of this. And the bit that I cut out that I saw, it was full on getting attacked by the Kraken. And it was rather concerning. I thought it was gonna break, but we're just gonna activate Bon Voyage. So here we go. On the 18th of May, 1966, the SM64 is leaving Phobos. I did say that it did land on Phobos. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show that, but at least I can show the ascent from Phobos. And we're not only gonna be leaving Phobos now. No, what we are gonna be doing is we are actually gonna be making our way over to Deimos where we are gonna stay in orbit for a little bit just to gather as much science as we possibly can before landing maybe on Deimos in the second half of 1966. But here we are performing our burn to leave Phobos's sphere of influence with Mars just in the background, looking very majestic. More shots of this craft as we try and connect our inclination so that we can actually encounter Deimos. This was really difficult. For some reason, my inclination just kept going all over the place. I'm not entirely sure why that happened. It was a little bit difficult, but you can see eventually we made it to Deimos. And we're just gonna perform a very quick burn. Well, 48 seconds to actually capture around this asteroid. It doesn't take much to capture at Deimos at all. It is very small and it is relatively far away from Mars. And to be honest, our orbit before we even got there, I had set that so it wouldn't take much Delta V to actually slow down to capture around Deimos. But with that, that was the last event of 1966 part one. And I've got to say what a truly terrible start to a year. I can't believe that we've killed off our first astronauts. I was completely gobsmacked about that and yeah, there is a lot of research that needs to be done into why that happened, and we will remember them. And actually, Carnosa Lunar Orbital Gateway will be renamed the Ellen Cox Memorial Station. And you can see, we've got the Bonnie Ellis wing and we've got the James Peters wing that we are gonna be sending over there shortly. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have, why not give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.